Hi, and welcome to the summer 2009 edition of QPod, the podcast of the Queen's Alumni Review magazine. I'm Sarah Beck. And I'm Andrea Gunn, the Keeping in Touch Notes editor of the Review. I'm sitting in today for Review editor Ken Cuthbertson, who's away on holidays. Lucky fellow. So, we have another interesting lineup for you today. We have a conversation with a young grad who's been the driving force between a project that's making a huge difference in the lives of some children in Kenya. Now, these children have been orphaned. We'll also have some campus news, a trivia contest question, and some tunes from our feature musical guest, Toronto singer-songwriter Kat Ratuzny, Art Sign 99. That's some of Kat's music you heard off the top of the podcast today, and it's playing in the background, a song called Human Condition. We'll tell you more about Kat and her music later on in the podcast, so please stay with us and give us a listen. If you've seen the review's online supplement, Review Plus, you may have read an article titled The Milk of Human Kindness. It was written for us by Carolyn Maskins. She's an Arts IO 9 grad who lives in Peterborough. Carolyn's article tells the story of the surprise she got when she set out to raise a bit of money to help improve the lives of some children at an orphanage in the countryside near the Kenyan capital of Nairobi. We thought Carolyn's story was pretty inspirational, and so we invited her to be our guest on this edition of QPod. Here's Sarah now in conversation with Carolyn Maskins. Carolyn, thank you very much for joining us on QPod. Well, thank you for having me, Sarah. Now, first off, can you tell me just a little bit about what made you want to go to Kenya in the first place? Well, actually, it probably started um, a long time ago, actually. When I was 12, um, it was the first time I started volunteering with children. 2007, that was the first opportunity that I had to take that passion for volunteering outside of the country. And I went to Honduras with a Peterborough-based charity called Friends of Honduran Children, and we built actually a house on an orphanage. And it was actually while I was there, I was there for two weeks, that really inspired me to look for other international volunteer opportunities. And when I stumbled across um, Global Volunteer Network, I was looking at the uh, programs that uh, people could apply to. And the one program I really took to immediately was actually in Kenya, and because that place volunteers actually um, working at children's orphanages, as a lot of the programs are teaching, and so I was quite interested in assisting in childcare. Um, so that's actually what led me to Kenya and to Global Volunteer Network. Okay. Now, where exactly in Kenya were you? Um, well, Shelter is located um, just inside of Gong Town, which is now outside of Nairobi, and it's just um, incredible landscape. Gong is a big side word for knuckles, which you can see the Gong Hills, and you can see them actually from shelter. So it's a just absolutely um, remarkable area, and it's just south of the forest as well. Now, you were placed at an orphanage. Tell me what the orphanage was like. Well, shelter, um, can, the orphanage itself is, as I said, it's quite rural, um, very remote. So when you arrive at shelter, you will come down from sort of like a um, beaten dirt path, uh, maybe on a motorbike or a taxi. Preferably a taxi, because the motorbike tend to fall. Um, so when you get to shelter, um, you're going to notice probably the just um, very red dirt and just the green at the time of the year I was there. Um, there's a one room, sorry, two room schoolhouse on your right when you pull in. The whole area is fenced off, as I mentioned, there are uh, hyenas, so just for safety. And then there's one main office building where at the back of that there's uh, corridors where volunteers stay. And then there's a separate building on the left, maybe about 50 feet to the left where um, it's the girls' dormitory. It was actually the girls' and boys' dormitory. So there were over 100 children sharing um, one small building in a separate room. But the boys actually now have their own dormitory, and that's located about 150 feet um, behind So, So there are about 100 children there. Where are these children coming from? Well, between um, 75 and 80% of the children have been orphaned by AIDS. 
um, recently actually at the December 27th election in 2007 and that actually stirred up a lot of uh, unrest, civil unrest and some of the children I met the first time I was there were there as a result of um, the political violence and actually one of the girls I met um, she was 10 years old, she was actually in the house while uh, she was with her mother and the house was being burnt down so there are a lot of AIDS orphans there um, there are also a lot of children there as a result of just sort of insecurity and violence in the area, so um, you never know someone's story, but it's uh, always going to be tragic. Right, it sounds like you were working with some kids who desperately needed some some help. Absolutely, um, absolutely, and it's, it's remarkable because I would never, um, most of the kids' stories I, I don't know, and um, because I'm there um, just for temporary business, I'm there to help, and but uh, you would never know just uh, how traumatic their past was. Um, it, just by interacting with them or just by playing with them. Now that one girl I spoke of, I mean, you may be able to tell with her because on her attempt to escape, you know, her arm was broken and, and she was badly burned. But um, overall, I mean, the children are happy um, and they're somewhat healthy. So you wouldn't know the, uh, the extent of their past just by meeting them in the present. Mm. So they're somewhat healthy, but you said they were quite badly malnourished. What made you decide that what the children really needed was milk, that what you would do to help was to give them these two cows? Well, um, as you mentioned, uh, I did say the children are malnourished, and the first time I was there, a fungal infection actually broke out amongst the children, and it spread incredibly quickly. Um, and the reason it spread was because the children don't have an immune system to um, fight that sort of infection. And so it wasn't actually until I came back to Canada and I sort of, uh, a lot of my experience I was just sort of uh, ruminating over. It was a very positive experience, but it was also um, a very uh, challenging experience in terms of dealing with something like malnutrition and, and where my place would be you know, part of that. So um, when I came back to Canada, I was corresponding with the director about possible ways to improve the children's nutrition. Um, I didn't single-handedly decide on milk. Um, we were just talking about what nutritional supplements or what nutritional improvements the children could be provided with in a feasible manner. And milk came up because it's kind of the staple drink of life that we have for it back in North America. And so we talked about you know cows or powdered milk, but um, cows were much more of a, of a cultural thing. Um, cows, they were really excited with the opportunity to have cows. And initially with Can You Hope, we had just planned on purchasing one cow just because I, my initial goal was to raise $5,000 and cow costs around $900 US in Kenya. So, but as fundraising grew, we decided, well, I guess we can get two of them. How long were you there the first time? Well, the first time I left um, in 2008, it was May, May 15th, and I came back June 15th or 16th. And the second time, so this year, I left May 2nd and um, I came back June, June 15th. Around about a month each, each time.